right here. That's where the water and chemical goes. Is that 20 gallon tank? Uh, it's a uh, 20, 20 or 21. Yeah, I believe it's a, I think it actually might be a 20 gallon tank. Yeah, pretty big tanks on here. This is the recovery tank, and this is the clean water tank and chemical tank. Control panel here has uh, basically one function, powers the machine on, mm -hmm. and controls the water flow. There's three settings for water. We can do low water, medium water, and uh, full, full water. Basically, depending on how dirty the floor is, we'll determine how much water we need to be putting down. I always start with the lowest setting and then add more water if we need more chemical down on the floor. This right here lowers the squeegee to the floor. So it's all mechanical. It's one less thing to go wrong. It's all mechanical. So that raises and lowers the squeegee to the floor. So if I need to go in reverse, we just want to make sure we have the squeegee up. If I want to do any kind of double scrub, make sure we just pick the squeegee up. This pin right here just raises and lowers the steering wheel column to whatever is comfortable for the operator. And then the foot pedal, if I, when I have my foot on it, I'm going to put my heel here and I push down on my heel to go in reverse, push forward here to go forward. So heel down, goes reverse. Or that. It is auto braking, so if I lift my foot, it's going to come to a stop. Don't have a brake button. This lever right here lowers the scrub deck to the floor. There's two settings. There's the floating scrub, which is what I call the everyday scrub. And then if we have a really heavy soiled area, we might have to lock it in and double the, the pad pressure. Don't run the machine like this on a constant basis. We just need it floating. Your everyday, we're talking about a really heavily soiled area that I really need more action on it. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna put it down, put it down further. Batteries are accessed here. We have wet cell batteries. So on a monthly basis, we do wanna check the fluid level in them to make sure that there's just enough water to go, to go over the metal plates. It's distilled water, not regular tap water. We want to use distilled water so it doesn't have any uh, deposits in it. But these caps just twist off. We want to use a glove and eyewear protection. That's the OSHA standards when we're checking the fluid level. Gloves, eyewear. What, what are the fluid levels supposed to be at? Can um, we so open one of those? So we can look down in there, see the metal leads at the bottom? Mm. There's just enough water over the top of them. So we don't want too much water and you don't want those metal plates to expose. Okay. So I always tell everyone every two weeks is the right time to check it. But if we do it monthly, it should be enough to make sure. Because what happens is that as we charge it and run the machine, that water is gonna boil and that's why we lose some water level in it. Charging it, this right here just comes off and we plug into the, the shelf charger that we've got plugged over here. Okay. And it connects to here. Charger, charger goes into the 110. This is just a, for the seat when you got Char to plug it. Charger in. also will kick off once it's fully charged, you know, when it's sitting up there. So even if you only run it for a little while, it does not hurt to put it back to that area. Area. won't hurt anything. Okay. That way you always got a full charge. Yep. On the back side here, we have the drain hose. So again, we're looking at about a 28 gallon recovery tank. So when it's full and it's time to, to dump the water out, put a little kink in it, twist the cap, and go to a floor drain. All the water, it's, you know, again, gravity fed, so there's gonna be a lot of water pressure if it's a full tank. I always say, fill, you know, when you, when you drain it, when you're putting it up for the night, leave the hood open. That'll keep any kind of bacteria growth to a minimum because it allows it to air dry. 
It doesn't hurt to wash it out just a little bit, clean everything out. This is the air filter that protects the back motor. This is a washable filter. So again, we just kind of want to look at it, make sure we can see through it. But if we have to, we can rinse this out, allow it to dry, and then put it back in right here. That's, that protects the back motor because we don't want any water or anything getting into that. That's why we want to keep that filter dry. All right. Um, below here is the, is the squeegee, of course. To remove this, the yellow knobs, again, just hand, they're hand tightened on. So I just twist them off, slide that off, take the vacuum hose off. What I'm looking for on here is we'll take this in. There we go. So what I want to look for here is I want to, I would wipe this down, you know, when I'm putting the machine away, um, because if there's any buildup on the squeegee blade, that's going to cause it to leave water behind. Each squeegee blade is designed to have four edges on it. So the most important edge is this inner edge. If we have to, to get a clean edge, we can pop this off here like that. And now I have access to remove the squeegee blade, flip it, or reverse it to get all four edges before I need to replace it. And then again, putting it back on, it's just hand tightened. The inner one has these thumb twists right here. So that to take it off, I just twist it till it's loose. This will slide up, out underneath the wheel. Grab right here. But this inner one, because this is what guides the water in to get picked up here it kind of meters it this is probably you only have to flip it once every two flips of this one okay. and you see it's got again same thing four four edges so I can reverse it and flip it to get all four sides Put it back in place so make sure I have everything lined up So it's just thumb tight. Oh. Thumb tight just holds it in place because okay. it doesn't need to be torqued in. Again, everything that's yellow is basically a touch point, so I'm going to put the squeeg squeegee back in place. If you do go around something, you know, you still have the round deals, maybe it'll get around, but if you really are cruising and all at once, you notice how it just goes on there, it'll smack that right off. You know, it's not going to tear something up. Last thing on for the squeegee blade itself, right here is a knob to add more pressure on the squeegee blade if we need it to, if we're leaving a trail of water and we don't have any objects on the squeegee blade itself, we may need to tighten this down and add a little bit more pressure on the, uh, the squeegee blade to keep it flush to the floor. Sometimes uneven concrete forces us to be a little you bit got, tighter. You guys got a pretty good floor here, yeah. shouldn't be a problem at all. Vacuum hose just goes back on like so, and we're ready to roll. Load the tank. Yeah, we need to put some water in there. <laughs>